Good morning and welcome to our service on this, the second Sunday of Advent. We think on this second Sunday of the prophets, and so we light our second Advent candle. And so we pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, the prophets said you would bring peace and save your people in trouble. Give peace in our hearts at Christmas and show all the world God's love. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask for his forgiveness and peace. A voice cries out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. So let us listen and turn to the Lord in penitence and faith. Turn to us again, O God our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us, Lord have mercy. Show us your compassion, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Christ, have mercy. Your salvation is near for those that fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. The Collect for the Second Sunday of Advent. O Lord, raise up, we pray, your power, and come among us, and with great might succour us, that whereas through our sins and wickedness we are grievously hindered in running the race that is set before us, your bountiful grace and mercy may speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. We hear our first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak to Jerusalem tenderly and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hands double for her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. 
for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Here ends the first reading. The Holy Gospel is written in the first chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, beginning at the first verse. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my lips and the thoughts of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. On this second Sunday of Advent, we have lit our second Advent candle, as we remember the prophets of old. Today we encounter two voices crying out from the wilderness. The prophet Isaiah calls out, using the words of the Old Testament, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, says your God. Words set so memorably to music as the opening words of Handel's Messiah. Then, in Mark's Gospel, John the Baptist shouts, Prepare the way of the Lord. Both Isaiah and John speak prophetically, pointing to a future time, in Isaiah's case, many centuries away. In the Gospel of Mark, the writer asks effectively two questions. Who is Jesus and what must the disciples of Jesus be like? Mark, of course, lets us hear his answer to the first question straight away. He writes, The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Then, so that there will be no mistake about the person to whom this text refers, Mark introduces the wild and woolly prophet of the New Testament, whom he calls John the Baptist. There are a good few centuries between the words of Isaiah and those of John, but for Mark, the time is irrelevant. Scripture reveals the ongoing work of God in creation. That which Isaiah announced many years before is now, for Mark, coming to fruition in Jesus Christ. 
in the year 587 before Christ, the Babylonian army had defeated Israel and took the bulk of the population, including all of the leadership, into captivity in Babylon. There they remained for 48 years. Isaiah chapter 39 was written about Israel's impending doom. There we read, the days are coming when all that is in your house and that which your ancestors have stored up until this day shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, says the Lord. We can imagine that that prophecy did nothing to make Isaiah popular. Prophets are rarely popular. John the Baptist was similarly blunt. The book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, sadly had not been published in Hebrew or even Aramaic in John's day. In the New Testament, we read of John referring to the Pharisees as you brood of vipers and saying to them, who warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come? Yet the prophets, Isaiah and others, were to warn the people to repent, to turn away from sin, to turn back to God. Jerusalem did fall to the Babylonians, Babylonians, bringing great social and political tragedy. How do we know if God loves and cares for us if we see all that we care about crumbling around us? Where is God? They may have asked in such a, in such a situation. And it's a question that people in our own time will continue to ask. Isaiah 40 comes into the crushing reality of defeat with a very different word from God. In the midst of distress, the distress created by their defeat in battle and deportation to a foreign land, God sends the prophet to call, comfort, comfort ye my people. Then we hear the words that connect this passage in Isaiah to the opening of Mark's Gospel. For the prophet writes, a voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then, then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Prepare the way for the Lord. This was Isaiah's message, and it is John's message as the New Testament opens more than five centuries after Isaiah. And it is our message today in this time of Advent, when we think especially not of the coming of Christ at Christmas, but of his second coming. When the Christ comes, will he find us watching and waiting? Or will he find us wanting? On this, the second Sunday of Advent, we may ask ourselves, what are we doing to prepare the way of the Lord so that others, through our words and through our example, 
may come to know Jesus in their hearts and in their lives. And so let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so let us turn to God in prayer. Watchful at all times, let us pray for strength to stand with confidence before our Maker and Redeemer that God may bring in his kingdom with justice and mercy, that God may establish among the nations his scepter of righteousness, that we may seek Christ in the scriptures and recognise him in the breaking of bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That God may bind up the brokenhearted, restore the sick, and raise up all who have fallen. That the light of God's coming may dawn on all who live in darkness and the shadow of death. that with all the saints in light, we may shine forth as lights for the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of our Heavenly Father, this day and always. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Lord, we offer you these gifts, this bread and this wine, the fruits of your creation, the labours of our hands. We offer them to you, that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you, with saints and angels praising you and saying, 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took a cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And now we give you thanks, because when he humbled himself to come among us in human flesh, he fulfilled the plan you formed long ago and opened for us the way of salvation. So now we watch for the day, knowing that the salvation promised us will be ours when Christ our Lord will come in glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms, and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. 
Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And so let us pray. Father in heaven, who sent your Son to redeem the world and will send him again to be our judge, give us grace to imitate him in the humility and the purity of his first coming that when he comes again, we may be ready to greet him with joyful love and firm faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God himself, the God of peace, make you perfect and holy and keep you safe and blameless in spirit, soul and body for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon all for whom you pray this day and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.